Now, it's two years since teenager Thomas Kelly was killed by a single drunken punch in Sydney. And today, that anniversary con coincides with some surprisingly positive news when it comes to alcohol fueled violence. St Vincent's Hospital has recorded a 50% drop in injuries from alcohol fueled violence in the last six months. The head of emergency at St Vincent's Hospital, Dr Gordon M. Fulder, joins us now from Sydney. Thanks so much for your time, Dr. Uh, what is the data that you're relying on here? What, what can you tell us about that drop? Well, what it is, is we uh, look at what comes through on the weekend, especially Friday, Saturday, and uh, we have noticed a absolute, uh, there's been hardly any severe head injuries. We know that, mean by that, people who have been punched so that their brain has been so damaged so we're worried whether the patient's going to live and if they live we worry about the patients having major brain damage or even dying a day or two later uh, and that has hardly occurred since the changes. And are you uh, spending time looking at the graph uh, and on your statistics and, and trying to work out why you think this has happened? Of course we do. Hmm. I mean, I don't think there's a single line and it would sort of, it'd be fabulous to know what has caused this. I think it's a multiple effect uh, and I think the, the money is to find out how this is going to be sustainable, how this is going to be able to uh, be functioning uh, once we get into summer again and the silly season because, I mean, people will always drink, a couple of drinks, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, what we don't want is totally drunk out of control people on the footpath just hammering into other people and by that I mean assaults where people are on the ground getting kicked and stomped that sort of thing is just totally unacceptable because the carnage and the devastation that comes from that uh, is just that there's no reason for it there's no excuse for it uh, and I think everybody wants rid of it. Do you think the late night lockout times have had, a, had some influence here? Well I think it's <laughs> it's like in medicine, actually. Uh, usually one thing doesn't do it. Yeah. It's a whole lot of things. But we're trying to get into people's head. We're trying to get into people's head. You don't have to be drunk. You don't have to be wasted or trashed to enjoy a Friday night or a Saturday night. And the other thing is I'd like like the buddy system. If you've been out for a long time, and usually there, there is a correlation here with how long the people have been out in the street drinking or in the clubs or wherever. Uh, if you've been out and say, well, mate, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, look, this is just a little bit of out of now. How about we call it a night, a day? I think we need the community, we need each other to actually change. I think the laws on their own won't, won't cut it. I think the community has to help itself but along those, the way too. That, that, that sensible advice that you talk about, that, that has been discussed for quite some time. Um, there, there must have been some sort of uh, functional reason um, why, these, why you're seeing less business. Well, I think, it, well, if I, if I had to blame one thing, yep. well, I won't blame one thing, uh, but there was very high policing. Yeah. There was immense media coverage, immense media coverage. And the thing is, everybody thinks it's somebody else getting drunk or hitting, punching somebody's head in, but it actually isn't. It's the person next to you in the bus that could be doing that, who's a totally normal person during the working week, if you will. Uh, and I think that message got out there. So just a minute, we, we, we're having a look at ourselves. My favourite, of course, is I wish people would take selfies, if you will, or have their friends take selfies of when they're drunk. And it's not a pretty picture. And I think the recognition that when we're drunk, we really look pretty stupid. And unfortunately, a small group of people, and I think they're identifiable too, actually, yeah. uh, will get out of control and become very violent. And it's the, uh, the anniversary, as we mentioned today, of uh, Thomas Kelly, that, that incident involving that, uh, that young man. And... Um, families have been great campaigners, haven't they, for, uh, for change? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, I've met them and they're, 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 it's really tough. I mean, they're, they're still going through hell, um, as I think we saw, uh, and things. And really, I don't think anybody can even pretend to know what a family like that uh, will still go through. Yeah. I uh, just uh, want to uh, go to a tweet here from one of our viewers, uh, Philip writes in, so let's get some more statistics across the country before we state late night violence is being positively changed. I don't think we're, we've reached any such uh, broad conclusion this morning, but what would you say, having um, your experience in Sydney, say to other um, cities, other councils around Australia 
as they try to nut out what, what's the best approach to, to get the, the reduction in violence that you've seen in Sydney? Uh, I agree with the tweeter, putting on my professorial hat, if you will. Uh, we need prospective, well set up, uh, methodological, uh, if you will, research and data so that we can work out what is happening, what is working in one precinct, if you like, one state. Uh, I can say that uh, the St Vincent's Health Organisation is looking at doing this with the hospital St Vincent's Melbourne and other hospitals and us as well in Sydney. Uh, and I think this is one very, very important thing uh, we have to do. We have to put some science behind it yeah. and so we can work out because it's going to be a long haul. I, I personally believe it's generational. Uh, we're not going to, I think even within one generation, become sensible drinkers. Dr. Folder, thanks so much for your time. Hopefully we can keep in touch sure. and um, maybe it uh, might be nice to hear some, some good news after the next silly season. Be a pleasure.